Ladies and gents, a very good morning to you then. So I'm out on another hike today, but I'm not going to bore you with the hike that I'm on. Today, I want to talk to you about my top five wild camping tips, especially for beginners. A quick shout out to a Cumbrian lad outdoors for tagging me to do this video. Go and check out his channel. He's got plenty of videos on there for you to have a look through. So as you can see today, the sun is out. Anyway, without further ado, welcome to Dave Outdoors. Tip number one, use OS Maps to help you find your spot. So you can subscribe to View Ranger, which is an online platform, or you can download the app on your phone where it will help you plot routes. It, there is an annual subscription, but you can also download the free version as well. My advice would be if you're going to look and delve into View Ranger a lot more, certainly pay the annual fee for this and it'll help you plot your routes it'll show you all the mapping that you need through th throughout the world. Failing this, if you don't want to pay the annual subscription, that's absolutely fine. Not a lot of people know about this, but you can go on to Google and type in Bing Maps. Once you're on Bing Maps, you can change the layering system that is up in the top right corner, and it'll bring up Ordnance Survey. So normally what I used to do before I delved into View Ranger and OS Maps I used to just take a screen grab of the route I was doing and then just print it off. So when using OS maps, it is important that you know what you're looking for. You need to look for a spot that you want to lay your head for the night, pitch up your tent. Ideally, you want that fantastic view. But you've also got to remember as well to try and be off the public footpath and also away from houses, estates or any built up areas. It's very important as well that you know how to read a map and use a compass. It's all well and good using digital GPS devices, but never ever substitute that for being able to read a map and compass. And also don't forget, using Google Maps is a very good way as well to check in if there's any photographs around that area that somebody's put on of your spot that you want. Just like I'm showing you now. I did a video on how to find the perfect spot during the first lockdown last year. So I'll put a card just up in the top corner there. If you want to check that out, just click it and it'll take you straight to the video. So there you go, that's tip number one. I fancy a bit of outdoors. I'll see you in a minute. So tip number two then, safety when hiking and wild camping. One of the first things you should really do is carry an ice card with you in case of emergency. And what we mean by that is your name, address and contact number. Leave that in the top of your rucksack, maybe laminate it as well to keep it waterproof because in the event of anything happening, people that find you may want to go through your rucksack and look for any contact details especially if you have a thumbprint or a lock on your phone so that's another good tip for when going wild camping and hiking make sure you have emergency contact details so that in the event of an accident somebody can help it's also important as well that you learn to read a map and how to use a compass a simple bit of kit but yet very effective now, if you're not very confident with map and compass reading, I'll put a link just up here to a lady who makes some great YouTube videos. Her name's Lou, and she's got a YouTube channel called Freedom Outdoors. Also, sticking with map and compass, make sure you learn to give a six-figure grid reference number, as per on the screen here. Again, Lou, Freedom Outdoors, she does a very good tutorial on giving a six-figure grid reference. I always remember it. Give your eastings first before you go up along the corridor before you go up the stairs and as per tip one 
I would certainly recommend you subscribe to the annual fee for View Ranger. The reason I say that is because View Ranger has a function called Buddy Beacon. And what I mean by this, just to give you an example, a Shropshire lad was out on a bimble the other day getting his daily exercise in and uh, I was tracking him. So it updates his position by GPS every 30 seconds as a minimum but also it can be uh, extended to, I think it's about two minutes, it'll give you an, another location to where that person is. So as you've seen on the screen there, there's a bit of an example, but yeah, I certainly like using View Ranger because when I'm out hiking and wild camping, I can get friends to track me and make sure I'm safe. I don't need one of them just yet. So I feel my next tip, tip number three, the great British weather. I do feel like that's my area of expertise, to be honest. So if you're new to wild camping and hiking, first thing you need to do after you've done your planning, check the weather. Check the weather on different um, sites. So the BBC weather, the Met Office, and certainly check the forecast for that area that you're going to be going. Depending on the forecast, I would certainly say something I do is pack for all weathers. It may add quite a few more kilograms or, or grams into your rucksack, but at least you know, whatever mother, mother nature can throw at you, you're going to be packed up and you're going to be kept dry and warm. Just remember as well, the higher you go, the cooler it's going to get. So what may seem like 10 degrees on the ground, may change to four or five degrees up on those hilltops and mountain tops. So always ensure that you take your hats, your gloves, spare base layers, waterproofs, which I know quite well about. There is another guy I use as well, and he's on YouTube and he is called the Mountain Weather Information Service. I find his YouTube channel to be very accurate when I'm planning for my hikes. So there's a little screen grab here now of his uh, YouTube channel. Go over and check him out, worth subscribing to because yeah, he certainly uh, is pretty accurate with uh, his weather forecasts. Tip number four, arrive late, leave early, leave no trace. Okay, so arrive late then. So you've had a day hiking on the trail. You need to figure out how long you're gonna be on the trail for and roughly whereabouts you're gonna be pitching up. Refer back to tip one for that. So arriving late means that you set up your tent or you arrive at your destination just before dark. So just in that one hour slot before it goes dark, use that as your time then to set up your tent, your sleeping arrangement, and also get some food on the go. The reason for that, yes, we all know wild camping is not illegal. It's just a civil offense, unless you refuse to move on, but you need to ensure that you're not going to get spotted, you won't get reported to the landowner, and you can enjoy that perfect view with no hassle. So ensure that you arrive late, pitch up just as that, in that hour before dark. Thanks, Brendan. <laughs> and you won't have any hassle. The next one is leave early. Ensure you're up just before sunrise. Get your breakfast and a brew on the go. And as early as you can, pack your tent away and make yourself back towards your final destination. Ensuring so again means that you're out of your spot before any hikers or any walkers come, spot you, report you to the landowner. The majority of us have never had a problem wild camping. I've ran into an instance once in my whole time. I was absolutely polite to the lady and she was absolutely polite to us and she knew the person whose land it was on and she said she won't say anything providing we leave no trace and that brings us on to the last one so during the pandemic last year we've obviously seen a lot of fly camping going on fly camping we know has been about in very small segments but last year it became apparent when a lot of people were going wild camping and leaving tents rubbish all their gear in the beautiful natural environments we have around us. That is not how we operate. We always like to abide by the wild camping ethos of arrive late, 
leave early and leave no trace. In fact, leave your camp spot or leave your site better than what you possibly found it. And what I've done before in the past is I've got a little bag that got given to me, No Trace, No Trash by Jock Wan. And yeah, any rubbish we find around our camp, we'll always pick up and take back with us. Tip number five, embrace it. So whether you're out on your own or in a group, there is that feeling of being secluded and alone, but never fear. There's nothing in the UK really that is going to harm you. Animals are probably going to be more scared of it than you. And so during the night, you'll probably be hearing a lot of strange noises, foxes, my first experience with a fox, or hearing the fox, was pretty daunting. I actually thought somebody was being murdered in the opposing field. So, never fear any noises. They'll probably just be the animals coming out at night time, looking to investigate and see what's happening. Something else you can do is take something to occupy yourself. MP3 player, download a movie, anything like that. But ensure you leave your cock alone. So another thing to remember as well, if you're going camping with friends, try and pitch further away from them. If you want a decent night's sleep, that person could keep you awake with their snoring. And I have had first-hand experience with this and so have the other guys who I've gone camping with. If you just want to pass some time away in the evening, another thing you can do, take a camera with you. Practice doing some photography shots, check out the views, sit down with a beer and soak up that atmosphere and soak up the views as well. Never be scared to try your first wild camp. Keep it local and 100% Make sure you embrace it. So to end this video then, I've got to tag five people. For those five, they've got to do a video for their top five wild camping tips. First one, it's got to be no other than hashtag a Shropshire lad, hashtag legend, hashtag goon. So Shropshire lad, show us your five top tips for wild camping and I can pretty much guarantee no what his first one will be don't go wild camping in winter <laughs> second tag then Trev and Nath actually so I want you both to have a go Trev and Nath from Summit or Nothing my third tag is going to be Andy from Got To Get Outdoors great channel go and check him out so number four tag I'm going to choose Trek Linda. So, hi Linda, how are you? And so my last tag is going to go to this lovely lady. And I have only been subscribed to her channel for a short amount of time, but she's a lovely lady and I like how she is in front of the camera. And that is Kaz Outdoors. But anyway, that's it from me. Hope this, uh, hope my top five tips of wild camping has been useful to you. And I'll see you on another lockdown adventure with me, Dave Outdoors. <laughs>